your Bibles, open them very quick to Luke chapter 4. Praise God, I don't plan to be in front of you long. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Remember, we were talking about the believer's authority. We look in, the, in retrospect to prayer. We want to talk about, just for a few minutes, the believer's authority in the anointing through the power of belief. You might say, well, why did I emphasize belief and not faith? Because it depends on what you're hearing. We're at a critical time in church history. You know, you can't listen to everything <laughs> or everybody. Amen. Because whatever is speaking to you, your soul the loudest, then you will endeavor to feed that. Huh? Remember, God said something, and it is a spiritual law to Israel on the border of Kadesh Barria. There were two that had a different spirit. The spirit of faith and power to believe what God said. But there was others, amen, that regardless of what God showed them, Regardless of what he did, I remember now there was a people that were, were, were being fed supernaturally. Angel food rained down from heaven. A wind came and blew fish out of the water right where they were. Quail fell at their feet. Water came out of a rock. Their shoes grew. Amen. Their clothes grew on them. And they got right at that border. And refused to go in. They believed something else. Listen, every time you believe something different, you have to let go of something inside of you. You have to. Within the word of God, within the word of God, when the word of God is planted inside of you, Whatever is the opposite of what you believe begins to die. It begins to die. And the weaker it becomes, whatever you've been believing, the weaker it becomes, the stronger God's word, what you're believing now, gets inside of you. Until the point that is what? It is easier now to pluck up without plucking the good. See, so, so we emphasize in belief and not faith because, again, it depends on what you're hearing. Because if you're not hearing truth, very simple, faith is not coming. Huh? Now, you hear me say this all the time. You'll believe you quicker than you were anybody else. I don't care how much trust or faith you have in a person, but you're going to believe you more. So you got to make sure, amen, the voice, amen, of your conscience is speaking back to you truth. Because that's determining your belief. Do you hear me? So, if you're not hearing truth, faith is not coming, fear is coming. Amen. So the subject then is implying, I'm implying then, what do you believe? And you hear me say the word all the time. You should constantly be doing what? Troubleshooting. When there is a problem in the system, with the wiring, plumbing, whatever it is, they call it a maintenance guy to do what? Troubleshoot. Something is wrong. How do you troubleshoot? You do it by words, and especially you do it when you're going through a test. That's the best time to troubleshoot because God is at that present showing you your own heart. And it's important. Don't overlook that. Don't turn your head away from that. Don't hide your head in the sand during those times. 
because the moment you see the lack, that that is not true what you've been believing, it loses its grip and power. So don't turn away. Amen? Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Of course, Jesus is talking. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. This particular verse is going to become more real to you from 2020 onward. Because Holy Spirit desperately wants to manifest Jesus in you. Amen. So even within this, you will go farther and do much more and much greater than what your Lord did. Now that's his words, isn't it? Amen. That's his words. So again, in this verse, we see our Lord was anointed to preach. That's the anointing of the evangelist, as we pointed out to you before. Amen. So miracles follow, signs and wonders follow the evangelist. He was anointed or sent to heal the brokenhearted. That's the anointing of the apostle, the sent one. It's a sent one. To recover sight, to recover sight. That can be natural or spiritual, which is the anointing of the prophet, which is able ones to see. The seer. To set at liberty the bruised one. This is also the shepherd's anointing. To cause one to grow up and walk in freedom. Amen. So we can see then that Jesus was anointed with the spirit without measure. So the only way that you're going to come to that measure of anointing, amen, is you're going to have to live a life free of sin. So, now how many of you know that Christ was not Jesus' last name? <laughs> right? You know that, right? It describes who Jesus is. He is the anointed one. And Luke tells us what he is anointed with. Burden removing, yoke destroying power. Now remember now, yokes are what? Your belief. What you believe. See, you are yoked up to your words or somebody else's. That's why Jesus said, take my yoke, take my words, believe what I say, and put it upon you. Huh? Learn of me. So this is a fight between yokes. So, Question then, why did he preach what he preached? Now, under the new covenant, John was John, um, um, John the Baptist, <laughs> not John the Revelator. Under the new covenant, John was the first preacher, right? He was the first preacher. And, and Jesus was the second. So John preached the gospel of repentance only. Jesus preached the gospel of repentance and the gospel of the kingdom. What? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So Jesus set the stage then, as it were. He laid the foundation. And that was pointing the world where? To himself. Amen? So, therefore, it's very important that he preach what he preached. Because, listen to me, 
if you get this wrong, you get the whole thing wrong. How many of you know there's a lot of people out there that are not preaching the gospel? They're preaching about Jesus, but which Jesus? There is no gospel without him. I mean, you know that. <laughs> there is no gospel without him. <laughs> and as we said before, the biggest push today in the world and in the church is to get people to believe that he is just one of many. That's the big push today. And if more inside of you wants to sin than walk in holiness, guess what? You're going to start believing stuff that is not wrong. Remember, I'm saying to you all the time, you're a triune being. There's three parts of you. That was the problem with Israel. They were seeing what God was doing, seeing it. It was evident. But inside of them, they chose to believe something else. They didn't deal with their heart. You have to deal with every part of you. Every part of you. Look at Romans 10. Romans 10 and verse 10. See, there's an, there is an anointing and a power that will come and release in your life based upon what you believe. The Lord confirms his word, what you believe. He doesn't confirm you. Right? With signs following. Romans 10, verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto deliverance. Now watch that. Listen to that. Very powerful. With the heart, what you believe releases God's righteousness on you, make you righteousness. But with your mouth, you are delivered. <laughs> huh? That word salvation is sevenfold. With your mouth, you are delivered. With your mouth, you remove the enemy's yoke. And replace it with Jesus' yoke. What you believe. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. See, God is not partial. He's not partial. Verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Very, very, very powerful verse. What we use as a verse of evangelism. So, one of the first powerful signs of the end is men showing up saying, I am he. That's what Jesus said. You know, there's a guy right now in Africa that's dressed like Jesus in a robe. And people believing it. They're believing it. They're, they, they, these pastors are taking them to their churches. Another, I don't know if it was in America or over here. For 30 or 40 years, he was having sex with the women in the church through some ritual saying they are delivered from demons as he, they have sex with him. For 30 or 40 years, he's been doing it. Brothers and sisters, we need to know what the Bible says. (laughs) 
So people showing up saying, um, he's saying that they are the Christ. Or even reaffirming that Jesus is the Christ. What is another thing that will get, turn you off God? When someone agrees with you that Jesus as he's the Christ, but they're not representing Jesus. The one of the things that Jim Jones did that took all those people to Guyana and they drank poison. Something like 900 some people. It was a pretty high number. He started a church, a white man started a church in the black community and he started out very, very good because his heart was benevolent toward the poor, poor blacks. But then after a while, he stopped moving farther and farther from the truth. Why? Because people put more confidence in that man and what he was doing for them than what God was saying. Until he got to the point where one day he stepped on the Bible, he dropped the Bible on the floor and stepped on it and said, I don't need that. I'm the word. And of course, you know, people start going to, to, the, to um, authorities, you know, but what could they do? And then you start mixing with, with the end time and fear, you know, and, and all this stuff. And, and convince all those people to fly over to some part of Africa to the utopia. Then finally... Some other people got a senator and some other people to come over there and investigate. And when they got off the plane, they start shooting at, at the plane and the people on the plane and convince most of the people. And it was horrific. Mothers giving their babies this poison. What do you believe? See, we look at stuff like that and we say, how can something like that happen? Listen, laws work. Laws work. You're either working, operating in the law of the spirit of life or the law of sin and death. Both of them are governed by a yoke. What you believe. Paul established some very important truths that we will be challenged in our day by. Firstly, heart righteousness comes through works. And not believing what comes out of your mouth. Heart righteousness. Secondly. That belief is only. That, that, that belief is in only one person. One man. Jesus. And thirdly. It doesn't matter. Who you are. All can come to Christ. Doesn't matter who you are. So the apostle Paul and the Lord established then a very important truth. If you want people to believe something, you have to preach it over and over and over again. Later on that verse, he says, How can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach except they be sent? So prior to this time, no one came preaching this truth prior to this time. Now, there were preachers prior to this, but they weren't preaching this truth. Because remember, um, when, when um, the apostle was out preaching, someone made a statement. You know, there were others came preaching this and this, claiming themselves to be something, and it came to nothing. 
Gamaeus, I think it was. And then it said, so-and-so, he came preaching this, and it came to nothing. But they need to compare them to Jesus. He said, if this man, what he's preaching, it will come to nothing either. If it's nothing. But if it's God, watch it as you find yourself fighting against God. So, so it was Jesus preaching. It was his preaching that hooked people up to the anointing. Just like the 12 and the 72. So, I want you to remember that Well, there is true Bible belief or faith. Well, there is true Bible belief or faith. One must pass the test. Now, belief. Belief means to trust. Trust, have assurance, to be persuaded to hear to, to rely on, to obey. That's what belief means. The scripture also says that he that cometh to God must first believe that he is. So the true test of Bible then, believing, is what? Action, right? Action. Believing is the coming, the coming of faith. Faith cometh by hearing. So believing is the coming of faith. Acting is the activating of faith or what you believe. Two distinct things. I can hand you, I can find you in a desert where you haven't had food or water in a long, long time. And then I hand you the food and you can sit there, amen, a few minutes from starving. You can sit there and look at the food and say, I believe. I believe if I eat this food, I will not die. I believe if I eat this food, I will not die. I believe that I eat this food and fall over dead. You believed it, but you didn't act on it. Amen. Don't get the two mixed up. You know, a lot of people believe that Jesus is the son of God that's in the world, but they ain't acting on it. They're not coming to him. They're not calling on his name. For salvation. Let me ask you a question. Have you, read, have you ever read anything in the Bible? Of course you have. Something in the Bible and found it difficult to believe. When it came to your own life. We all have. Do you know how to correct that? Psalms 112. Psalms 112. The writer makes a very, very powerful statement. Psalms 112, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man or woman that feareth the Lord. Now, what brings fear to the New Testament Christian? The word. What brought fear to the Old Testament Christian? What they saw. The Bible said concerning Moses, he saw God and greatly feared and trembled. You don't see God that way. So what brings fear to the New Testament person? What you believe. As you believe God's word, 
reverential fear drops inside of you. See, that's a product of the law of the spirit of life working in you. As you walk in the spirit, reverential fear grips your heart. Amen. And the more you obey God, the more fearful you are to dishonor him or not to obey him. See, that's a product of the work, <laughs> of the word that's going on. All right. So he said, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted, see, greatly in his commandments. That's someone who's obeying, right? If, you, if you're delighting greatly, you're obeying. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. So, it does not matter. It does not matter. What your seed is doing now. What has mattered and does matter is your fear of the Lord. Right? Now, listen to what, listen to this person. Listen to what he says. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. That includes money too. But how do you mean, you know, there's much more. When you, in retrospect to wealth, it means much more than money. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright, unto the upright, there ariseth light in the darkness. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. See, when you obey God, more light comes to keep you obeying. When you obey God, there's action, right? The moving toward God, not just doing what he says, but it moves you toward or closer to God. You need light to do that. So more light is released on the inside of you. There's no such thing as, there's no such thing as, I don't know what to do. Have you done hitherto so far what God has instructed? Whether the last truth that you glean from the scripture or the last thing he spoke to your heart. Do you hear me? If you have not, I can tell you now, light will not spring up in your heart. Thinking of moving forward, the next step. If you don't know what God is saying, go back to the last place you did what he said. That the last place he told you to do something. And ask yourself, did you do it? Whether he spoke to you, amen, your heart, or what he spoke to you out of the scripture. Either one. When you grieve the Holy Ghost, concern your belief, the light will dim. Amen, the light will dim. The revelation will stop. The gleaming trying to understand scripture will stop. The light will dim. You need to go back where he last spoke to you, where you did not do. Amen. Because eventually, if you keep moving forward, the light will get dimmer and dimmer. I mean, think of the natural. If you're working in the dark and you have a bright light and you're working in the dark and the light goes out, can you work? Can you do anything? Can you move forward? Can you go back? No, you can't do nothing. Same thing spiritually. 
See, so the upright, the upright is those who fear the Lord. Those who are doing what they believe. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lend it. He will guide his affairs with direction. Surely he shall not move, be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. There's nothing more blessedness about that. Knowing how to operate in life, having the things to do in life, both naturally and spiritually. That's what, that's what Psalms 112 is about. Verse 7, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Why? Because the fear of the Lord is in it. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. You really need to meditate all those scriptures right there because there is a process that is at work there that begins in fearing the Lord, delighting in his commandments. Not only does it affect you, you're releasing something in your house and watering it that cannot die. Amen. But it's up to you. So, so David says, let's, put, let's say it this way. David says, a man or woman that has a fixed heart believes. See, a fixed heart, you're believing something specifically. Now, whatever, wherever you are having a problem believing, wherever you are having a problem believing, your heart is not established on what he said. That's why you're having a problem believing. It must be established. See, and that's either in God or in the people of God. You find a problem trusting somebody, you're not established. <laughs> huh? Your faith in them is not established. Like some, po some people, I believe as far as I can see him, I can keep my eye on them. <laughs> That's not established belief. See, if you're not established, you you either listen to me. If you're not established, you either. Don't know what he said or refuse to believe what he said. You don't know what he said or you refuse to believe what he said. You're letting cares or deceitfulness or other things put pressure on you in retrospect to what he said. So you got to get your heart established. For the light to keep flowing within you. And light bringing more light and bringing more light. That's what scripture does. Scriptures open up this and then that scripture opens up that. And then and that scripture opens up that. And then that scripture opens up that. Light begat light. But you have to be established in that. You can't be changing. For instance, say for instance, you have a problem loving yourself and others. Knowing just how much God loves you will solve that problem. It 
if you have a problem loving yourself, you don't really know how much God loves you. Amen. <laughs> See, all things are made possible by him and through him. So what do I do? You got to be establishing. So I go and read his love letters to me. To release the anointing of love. But it is based upon what you believe. Huh? If you are struggling to love anyone because of something that was done to you in the past, you're going to struggle with the love of God until you deal with that. Until you deal with it. See, because it is the love of God that purifies you and cleanses you. The love of God. That's why it's shared abroad in your heart. It moves throughout your heart. Cleaning. Uh, washing, moving away. The love of God's cleaning, washing, moving away. Then the love of God hits this thing in your life. You're finding it difficult to let go in retrospect to someone. You stop the love of God right there. Then you start losing faith and confidence in yourself. You start finding... You start finding, struggling hard to believe and stand in faith. Because faith works by love. You have to deal with that. Now the Holy Spirit will go on and keep blessing you until he can't anymore. And then it stops right there. And you have to deal with it. Now. How do I deal with it? Many of them can't go back and deal with something because you don't know when it did that to you. How do I deal with it? You have to deal present tense. What's going on in your life now? That's weakening you. Because of something that happened back here. Hmm? Right? For instance, before you got saved, you were in a relationship the whole time, you always cheated on. And if you didn't deal with that, you come into the kingdom, get saved, come into the kingdom, God give you a, love, a loving, loving husband or wife or whatever the case may be. If you don't deal with that, it'll be hard for you to accept accept someone else's love or believe in their love. What? The only thing that can deal with that, the love of God. But the love of God has to do what? Heal that in your life. Something's broken there. So the love of God has to heal that. For you to do what? So he has to heal something that was broken in the past to enable you to love like you need to in the future or now. Do you get me? You go to the word, read it, confess it. When you see it, the light has came on. When the light is on, faith is there. God will use present thing, present ten things in your life as triggers to unlock wounds and hurts from your past. Unlock it. When he unlocks it, it will release all that emotions inside of you. So he could do what? Heal it. He has to release it in order to heal it. Amen. Our life is like a scab that it goes over a sore. The scab comes to protect, right? 
But see, there is an opposite of that in the realm of darkness. It scabs over something in the past so that no one can touch it, so that it won't be healed. Amen. God has to pull the scab off and let his life and love breathe into it to heal it. Do you hear me? So, when, my, when is my heart established? You may say. When is my heart established? When peace floods your heart and it is more real than the situation you're facing. See, here is another byproduct of belief, what you believe. It not only releases the love of God, it releases peace inside of you. And that peace brings what? A rest. So you're no longer anxious. You transcended time. You're not concerned about when or where. Huh? You know. <laughs> right? So, when peace floods your heart, and it is more real than the situation you're facing, you know then your heart is established. I will keep them in perfect what? Peace. Well, how does he do that? Because you chose to believe. So, the condition of your heart will determine the, the condition of your belief. If your believing is weak, then your heart is weak. What, what, what am I saying? The acid test, so to speak, of believing is acting on what he said. Okay? If I believe what he said concerning, like, this is a good example. If I believe what he said concerning giving, then give. That's the acid test, right? If I'm not giving, it's because I don't believe, regardless of what excuse you give yourself. See, that's the acid test, acting. So, belief, not authority. Authority is what? Dedicated power, right? God gave you authority to speak for him or say what he said. He gave you that authority. Right? He told his disciples, go and do what? Preach. Say what I said. Speak for me. That's what he told the 12. That's what he told the 72. That's what he told you. His word is anointed. Because Jesus is the anointed one. So, if his word is anointed, yeah, this is the beauty about God and his word. Say so you minister to someone. Now you're anointed because the anointed one is in you. That anointing that is within you based upon your spiritual level of growth, right? But then now you believe God's word. It is anointed. You go speak that word to someone. Now, because what pe it's like anointed, that word is infused with burden-removing, yoke-destroying power. That word, right? That word that you're releasing to someone. Now, but it needs the person who you're ministering to have a greater darkness level than that, that anointing that's in that word you're releasing. Right? So, because what? 
It's according to the power that's working in you. Amen. So, because God is good and he's merciful, then what God do? God comes along now and quickens. Huh? Remember what we talked about before? He releases a surge of power through you that you don't presently carry in your own spirit. And when you speak that word, it will move and break burdens and remove yokes in that person's life. That surge of power now done went through you, released in your word, and now you're back to normal. <laughs> and the word has been delivered. Right? Now, that's how Jesus ministered. But God could send the right degree of power through Jesus all the time because he was without sin. What hinders God many times and his delivery to mankind is us, the deliverer. <laughs> We're the deliverer. <laughs> Amen. And so this is why it's so important, as we said earlier, first of all, it's important what you believe. And then second, it's important how your heart is established. The fear of the Lord on the inside of you. Are you obeying God in retrospect to your life? See, all these things position you to be quickened with the power that is presently needed. Why is this so important now? Because God is about to use you as lightning rods all over the world to release his power. Now, what is that? You don't see it. But that's an angel coming and touching you. That's a quickening. Sends a power to you to remove burdens and destroy yokes in someone's life. Amen. So. You have, you even have authority to tell someone that their sins are forgiven. You have that authority. When they accept what Jesus said concerning them. That's what got Jesus in trouble. He turned around and told him, your sins are forgiven. <laughs> Who can forgive sin but God? You have that same authority. If you, people in the, and I found this out when I used to go and minister in the, in the, in the psychiatric place. You, they used to call them insane asylums. They got a political root, right? Psychiatric place. A lot of people in that are out of their mind. You know, mo most of them believe they've committed the unpardonable sin. <laughs> now, what in the world is the connection there? It's spiritual in nature. They believe they committed the unpardonable sin, which they have not. But that's the yoke, the burden that the enemy has upon them to keep them in bondage. To believe that they committed the unpardonable sin is to believe that what? They can't be helped. It can't be free. You have the power. And that's why Jesus said what he said for two reasons. To prove who he was to the scribes and Pharisees, but to break that bondage that was on the person that was laying in the bed. Your sins are forgiven. There are a lot of people out there who are religious in nature. They've been in church. They came up, but they never surrendered their heart to God. Or even they may have. Now they're in the world and the world has taken its toll upon them. And they need to hear from you, amen, burden removing, yoke destroying power words. And part of that is telling them, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Jesus Christ, accept him and your sins are forgiven. Your past has been wiped clean.
In the old covenant, it was the prophet that spoke for God. The seer heard the audible voice of God. Well, when God poured out his spirit, his prophetic voice came upon you as well. As we, and, you know, as we said concerning prayer, we commune with him so we can speak with authority. So, my question to you today, brothers and sisters, what are you believing? What are you believing? Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed, Paul said, of the gospel of Christ. For it is, listen to what he's saying, it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Now that means more than just being born again. So, if you can get someone to believe the right thing, you can remove their burden. And destroy their yoke. See. You, you have to quickly recognize. And this is a part of the tool of evangelism. You have to quickly recognize. A person. If they're argumentative. That's a spirit. You're speaking truth. They're not listening to you. They're only listening to destroy what you're saying. So you have to then deal with that spirit under your breath. Deal with that spirit. Because unless you can get them to see, then you can't help them. Unless God fills your heart with such a level of compassion. And that is the same way saying an angel coming and touch you. And an overwhelming presence. See, that presence God releases through you, it doesn't push them to do anything. It's like The power of God, <clears throat> have the power of God ever came upon you to such a way and all you felt at that moment was how much you were loved. Right? How much you were loved. And that caused you to do what? Surrender, right? Melt at his feet, right? See, God will release an aspect of himself. That is not intimidating in nature. And in doing so, he's not forcing no one to do anything. He's simply opening their eyes when they see him that way. That's what compassion does. That's what compassion does. A person who is an enemy to themselves. And Paul told Timothy, people who oppose themselves. In other words, they're their greatest enemy, themselves. And when you look to the Lord Jesus on the inside, and he floods your heart with compassion, something releases out of you. Like a spray. And it is. You can't see it in the spirit. And it covers them. Hallelujah. That's what you have as an anointed one. But brother, sister, you have to be thinking in retrospect to that. Now, let me show you a law. Look at Jesus' mentality. Look at his mentality. 
I have need to go to Samaritan. I must work the works of him that sent me. Why it is day. You see his mindset. That should not be just the mindset of the preacher. You are a preacher if you are a believer. That should be your mindset. Everywhere you go, your mindset should be every person is a potential candidate for burdens being removed and yokes being destroyed. What does that do? That makes a demand on heaven. And make heaven, what heaven has available, available to you. Just that expectancy. Believe me, that is very powerful. But if you go throughout your day not thinking about any of the people, because it looks like everybody seems to be all right. Brother, sister, the average person is not all right. Have you ever sat in a place or went through a place and watched people pass and inward asked the Lord, what about them, Lord? What about them? What about them? Can you see you're making a demand on heaven? When you start, I challenge you, when you start making a demand on heaven that way, God will start using you to give people exactly what they need. At that moment. What do you think. God meant when he said. You must bear fruit this year. That's what he's talking about. The fruit of the spirit. Blossoming in your life. Is. Resources. To do kingdom work. And the first one that shows up is love. When you start seeing people with the love of God the way God sees them, He will give you what is needed. To help them. Amen. Everyone that believed it. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. That was the scripture I gave you. Romans 1.16 right? Was that the one I gave you? Listen. This is why Jesus showed up preaching. This is why he did. Now what is the power of God? The gospel, right? You can't get the power of God unless you can get the good news about the power. The good news about the power. And the power is not the anointing. It's the result of the good news being preached. That releases the anointing that remove burdens and destroy yokes. Let's say it this way. The good news about the anointed one and his anointing is the power of God. You think the world sees Jesus the way you do, but they don't. <laughs> Even some Christians don't see Jesus the way you do. Some Christians don't believe that Jesus will heal them. Remove their burden and destroy their yoke. That's your responsibility to get them to see this Jesus. Who is the power for? Those who believe the message that Jesus is anointed. Jesus is anointed. A very simple truth. What am I doing, brother and sister? I'm taking you back to the source. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. So we just replaced Jesus the man with our steps and procedures. Traditions. So it's no longer Jesus hear me or Jesus do this. 
the anointing is meant to be released. So simply start releasing the anointing. How, pastor? Based upon what your belief is. What do you believe concerning Jesus? Now, if you believe it, you're acting on it. If you're acting on it, your heart is settled in that. Peace is flooding your heart. There is a witness. Acts 15, 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Notice that. Should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Acts 16, 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, What must I do to be saved? What must I do? See, they had to believe something. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. He that believeth not shall be damned. The one that believeth not is believing something. They're just not believing what they need to believe. So notice the praise. Preach. They got to hear. And what they hear is what they will believe. And what they believe concerning him is the utmost importance. Religion will tell you everything will be all right. It will all work itself out. It will all work itself out. You better know what you believe. <laughs> Amen. You better know what you believe. And these signs, verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Do you believe it? Oh, yes, I believe it, Pastor. Are you acting on it? You're not acting on it. You don't believe it. Well, but well, 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 I, I, I just, I just, I'm, I'm reserved. I can't do that. I can't let him know. I can't tell him. I'm gonna cast out the devil. Are you, aren't you a believer? Them that believe. Them that believe. Not them that saved. Them that believe. (laughs) Why is it so important to know what you believe? And listen to me. If you don't remember anything else I said, why it is so important to know what you believe? Because what's following you every day is what you believe. What, lead, what follows you when you leave your house every day is what you believe. You know when you leave your house, demons follow you and angels are following you. So what am I saying? Who are you activating? Right? Who are you activating? One more, Luke 13, Luke 13, 22. I cannot emphasize enough, brother, sister. See, I can't look at you with my natural eyes and just look at you, look at your head and know what you believe. But if the Lord moved the scales from my eyes and I see in the spirit realm, immediately I know what you believe. So does demons. They know what you believe. And remember, keep this in mind. Whatever is active in you, active in you, that is determining your course and your destiny. 
whatever is active in you. In other words, you remember I told you, you are believing something subconsciously and you are believing something consciously. It doesn't matter what you're believing consciously if it's not planted within you subconsciously. It does not matter what the heart one believes. It is what you are believing subconsciously that is directing your life. It is determining your actions. It is determining what you will do next. It doesn't matter what you're believing consciously. You won't do what you're believing consciously if something is planted within you subconsciously. Do you hear me? As you lay up on your bed at night, that which you believe subconsciously, it's working in you all the time. It is plotting the course of your life even the next day. It is subconsciously plotting, setting paths, determining direction in everything as you lay up on your bed. That's why it's important for you to believe the right thing. The Lord comes along and writes upon the, your heart what he believes concerning you. What should happen. The angels read that. And if you can't get that, if you can't get that, amen, implanted inside of you, you will fight against God's purpose for you. How do I get that? It must be quickened. You must wait on God. You must pray in other tongues. See, I'm saying again and again, you have to be concerned about all three parts of you. Because each one of them is speaking to you. Luke 13. Luke 13. So, the authority God gives you through words is based upon your belief. If you're not believing what God says, you have lost that aspect of authority when it comes to your words. God cannot quicken something that is not his. Something that is not his will. What are you declaring concerning yourself or others that is not the will of heaven? He can't quicken that. But your authority lies in your belief, in what you believe, in your words. You have to bring it in line with God, with heaven, right? Verse, 30, verse 22. Luke 13, 22. And he went through the city and villages teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. In other words, his path was Jerusalem. Then said unto him, Lord, then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Now he said this based on what was Jesus is preaching. Then he said unto them, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter it and shall not be able. So he's talking about, he's talking about his children. When once the master of the house is risen up and had shut to the door or has shut the door 
And ye begin to stand without and knock at the door. What does that sound like? The ten versions, right? And knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not. I don't know who you are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence. And thou has taught, uh, taught, and thou has taught in our streets. But you shall say, so see, that now they're saying, we are identifying with you. But ye shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. What is that? You did what your own heart wanted to do. You govern yourself. I didn't govern you. Huh? They believed the wrong thing concerning the king. But they say they was doing things in his name. Then shall there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When ye when you will see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. And you yourself thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are there are last which there are last which shall be first, and there are first which shall be be last now it doesn't appear but all of this is based upon what they believed much of the church has a picture of Jesus now that is not a picture of him and their own heart is governing them they're following the traditions of men. Amen. But here comes the danger in our day now because the enemy knows it. He will release a dark power in a, in a part of the church. To what end? To make them believe that God is with them. What was the last thing that they said? We did this in your name. We cast out devils. What did Jesus, the statement Jesus said to the scribes and the Pharisees? If you don't believe who I am, believe me for the work's sake. That's what the enemy is going to do. To the church. To try to convince them that God believes who they are. But they're operating in a power that's not God's. He doesn't know them. Amen. The straight gate is God's word governing you. The straight gate is narrow. It's not that broad way that Isaiah talked about. So as we get near the timeline of the end, you must, you have to be, have to be more and more conscious of your belief, what you're believing. Amen. The deception, the deception will 
quickly transition. Again, when much of the church will think that they are anointed. In spite of what they're believing. Brothers and sisters, there's a lot of crazy stuff out there that people are preaching are not gospel. Amen. So what I'm saying to you, what I'm saying to you, you have, you have to stay in the presence of the Lord. Don't get so busy where your time is so costly, it will cost you. Amen. That is the thing that will always bring us back in check. Amen. What we believe and what we are sensing. Come on, stand to your feet. Father, we thank you once again for what you have given us. When you left the earth, you gave us keys. Keys of the kingdom. It will unlock every door that is needed. You have given your children authority. That authority is about to greatly increase in the lives of those who are preparing, who are making themselves ready. You will empty yourself into their vessels. You will pour yourself into the spirit, into their soul, into their body. And they will be governed by the will of heaven. But you said, Lord, how can two walk together except they be agreed? The battle with heaven and earth is bringing your people into agreement, into alignment with you. And of all the things that you gave us, God, all the tools that you gave us, Our trust is in you. You are the one that we look to. To access your grace by faith. All that you have made available to your people. Each one of them has been given in retrospect to their destiny and call a measure of grace to walk in. But the Holy Spirit is endeavoring to bring that man on the inside to the place 
that it can govern that grace. Lord, you are always faithful. We thank you for that. We thank you for never giving up on us, being so good. We will not give up on ourselves. We will keep our eyes on you. Great King, on you. We will keep our eyes on you. Thank you, Father. Come on, just lift up both hands and thank God for his word. Thank you, Father. We honor you. We exalt you. We glorify you. We give you all the praise and glory. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, great king. In them. As they leave this place, Father, have your way. Have your way. Govern them. Look through their eyes. Feel through their hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Perceive through their heart, great king. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, God is good.